When you implement backpropagation, you find that there's a test called gradient checking that can really help you make sure that your implementation of backprop is correct. Because sometimes you write all these equations and you're just not 100% sure if you got all the details right in implementing backpropagation. So in order to build up to gradient checking, let's first talk about how to numerically approximate computations of gradients. And in the next video, we'll talk about how you can implement gradient checking to make sure that your implementation of backprop is correct. So let's take the function f and replot it here. And remember, this is a f of theta equals theta cubed. And let's again start off with some value of theta. Let's say theta equals 1. Now, instead of just nudging theta to the right to get theta plus epsilon, we're going to nudge it to the right and nudge it to the left to get theta minus epsilon as well as theta plus epsilon. So this is 1, this is 1.01, this is 0 0.99, where again epsilon is same as before, is 0 0.01. It turns out that rather than taking this little triangle and computing the height over the width, you can get a much better estimate of the gradient if you take this point f at theta minus epsilon and this point, and you instead compute the height over width of this bigger triangle. So for technical reasons, um, which I won't go into, uh, the height over width of this bigger green triangle gives you a much better approximation to the derivative at theta. And you want, you know, sort of instead of taking just this little triangle on the upper right, is as if you have two triangles, right? This one on the upper right and this one on the lower left, and you're kind of taking both of them into account by uh, using this bigger green triangle. So rather than a one-sided difference, you're taking a two-sided difference. So let's work on the math. This point here is f of theta plus epsilon. This point here is f of theta minus epsilon. So the height of this big green triangle is f of theta plus epsilon minus f of theta minus epsilon. And then the width you know, this is 1 epsilon, this is 2 epsilon, so the width of this green triangle is 2 epsilon. So the height over width is going to be first the height, so that's f of theta plus epsilon minus f of theta minus epsilon, divided by the width, so that was 2 epsilon, which we worked out down here, um, and this should hopefully be close to g of theta. So plugging in the values, remember f of theta is theta cube. So this is theta plus epsilon is 1.01. .01. So I'll take the cube of that minus now 0 0.99. Take the cube of that divided by 2 times 0 0.01. Um, feel free to pause the video and plug this in the calculator. You should get that this is 3.0001. Whereas from the previous slide, we saw that g of um, Theta, this was 3 theta squared, so when theta equals 1, this is... So these two values are actually very close to each other. The approximation error is um, now 0 0.0001. Whereas on the previous slide, with taking the one-sided difference, just theta and theta plus epsilon, we had gotten 3.0301, and so the approximation error was uh, 0 0.03, right, rather than... Um, 0 0.0001. But so with this two-sided difference way of approximating the derivative, you find that this is extremely close to 3, and so this gives you, you know, much greater confidence that g of theta is a, uh, probably a correct implementation of the derivative of f. When you use this method for gradient checking and backpropagation, this turns out to run twice as slow as you were to use a one-sided difference, it turns out that in practice, I think it's worth it to use this other method because it's just much more accurate. A um, little bit of optional theory for those of you that are a little bit more familiar with calculus. It turns out that, um, and it's okay if you don't get what I'm about to say here, but it turns out that the formal definition of a derivative is um, for very small values of epsilon is f of theta plus epsilon minus f of theta minus epsilon over 2 epsilon. And the formal definition of a derivative is in the limit of exactly that formula on the right as epsilon goes to 0. And the definition of a limit is something that you learn if you um, take a calculus class, but I won't go into that here. And it turns out that 
for a non-zero value of epsilon, you could show that the error of this approximation is on the order of epsilon squared. And remember, epsilon is a very small number. So if epsilon is you know, 0 0.01, which it is here, then epsilon squared is 0 0.0001. Um, the big O notation means the error is actually some constant times this, but this is actually exactly our approximation error. Uh, so the big O constant happened to be 1. Whereas in contrast, if we were to use this formula, the other one, then the error is on the order of epsilon. And again, when epsilon is a number less than 1, then epsilon is actually much bigger than epsilon squared, which is why this formula here is actually a much less accurate approximation than um, this formula on the left, which is why when doing gradient checking, we rather use this two-sided difference where you compute f of theta plus epsilon minus f of theta minus epsilon. Um, and then divide by 2 epsilon, rather than this one-sided difference, which is less accurate. If you didn't understand my last few comments, all of these things down here, don't worry about it. Uh, that's really more for those of you that are a bit more familiar with calculus and with numerical approximations. But the takeaway is that this two-sided difference formula is much more accurate, and so that's what we're going to use when we do gradient checking in the next video. So you've seen how by taking a two-sided difference, you can numerically verify whether or not a function g, g of theta, that someone else gives you, is a correct implementation of the derivative of a function f. Let's now see how we can use this to verify whether or not your backpropagation implementation is correct, or if you know, there might be a bug in there that you need to go in and tease out.